we want to find the domain of the given vectored valued function. Where the domain of a vectored valued function is the intersection of the domains of x of t, y of t, and z of t, where x of t, y of t, and z of t are the x, y, and z components of the vectored valued function. So going back to our example, notice how x of t is equal to t cubed, y of t is equal to the square root of the quantity t plus four, and z of t is equal to the square root of the quantity five minus t. So now we'll find the domain of x of t, y of t, and z of t, and then we'll find the intersection of all three domains, which will give us the domain of the vectored valued function. To help us do this, we'll look at the graph of x of t, y of t, and z of t. So here's the graph of x of t equals t cubed, where the domain is a set of all possible values of t, and notice how t can be any real number, and therefore the domain of x of t would be all reals. If we wanted to use interval notation, we'd have the open interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. Looking at the graph of y of t, notice how the possible values of t would be all the values of t that are greater than or equal to negative four. So the domain of y of t, again, is t greater than or equal to negative four. If we wanted to solve this algebraically without a graph, we'd have to recognize that the quantity t plus four can't be negative, which means it'd have to be greater than or equal to zero. So if we solve this for t, notice how again we'd have t is greater than or equal to negative four. Using interval notation, we'd have the interval from negative four to infinity, where the interval would be closed on negative four and open on infinity. And then finally for z of t, again analyzing the graph, notice how the possible values of t would have to be less than or equal to positive five. So the domain of z of t, again would be t less than or equal to positive five. Algebraically, we'd have to recognize that the quantity five minus t must be greater than or equal to zero. So if we add t to both sides, notice how we'd have five is greater than or equal to t, which is equivalent to t is less than or equal to five. And again, using interval notation, we'd have the interval from negative infinity to positive five, where the interval is closed on positive five. Now let's go ahead and graph all three intervals on the same number line and determine the intersection of these three intervals, which will give us the domain of the vector valued function. So let's let five be here and negative four be here. Well first, the domain of x of t was all real numbers, or all reals, which should be the entire number line. The domain of y of t, t is greater than or equal to negative four, so we'd have a closed point on negative four, arrow to the right. The domain of z of t is t is less than or equal to positive five, so we'd have a closed point on positive five, and an arrow to the left. And again, we're looking for the intersection of these three intervals, where the values are in all three intervals. Notice how this would be the closed interval from negative four to positive five. All of these values are in all three domains, and therefore this interval is the domain of the vectored valued function. So using set builder notation, the domain would be t such that t is greater than or equal to negative four and less than or equal to positive five. If we wanted to use interval notation, we'd have the closed interval from negative four to positive five. Because the interval is closed, we use square brackets. Before we go, let's take a look at the graph of r of t. The given vectored valued function would trace out this space curve. I hope you found this helpful.